What is up guys? Good morning. I hope it doesn't bother you that I say good morning, but that's just what feels natural for me because right now it's the morning, you know? Ever since I posted my migraine diagnosis story video, I've gotten a lot of questions about which medications I've tried for my migraines and which ones I'd recommend. And I can tell you straight up right now, it depends. It depends on your migraines, depends on your doctor, depends on your body, your body chemistry, what your preferences are, and what other medications you're already on. But I figure what I can do is let you guys know what my experience was on certain medications and let you know why I switched from certain ones to other ones. And um, maybe that'll help you with some of the pros and cons or get you thinking about something that you hadn't been thinking about before. So today, that is what we're gonna talk about. A couple of little caveats before we get started. I am only going to go over the prescription medications and I'm only going to talk about the abortives, not the preventative ones. So these are specifically medications that are made for onset of migraines and that you only take when you definitely feel one coming on and they're made to lessen the severity of the migraine. I will hopefully get to the preventatives in the future, but that's just too much to throw into this video. You ready to get started? Because first things first, here is my shameless box of hoarded migraine medications. This is a pretty big box of hoarded medication. So I'm gonna start with that. Why did I hoard all of these abortives? I'm gonna try not to rant. I'm gonna try really hard not to rant. For most abortive medications, for most triptans, when you feel your migraine coming, you take a dose of your triptan and you wait two hours. And if the migraine doesn't go away within two hours, you can take another dose. Triptans are a little bit aggressive, for lack of a better word. So you're only allowed to take 10 doses per month. And if you do often have to take that second dose two hours later, then that means that you can technically take up to 20 doses per month. It's 20 doses per month for 10 migraine days. So logic would say that if you are a documented chronic migrainer, meaning that you get 15 or more migraines per month, you should be able to get insurance to cover at least those 20 pills per month. But that is unfortunately not the case. Unfortunately for a lot of people with chronic migraines, insurance just doesn't cover the number of doses that you're allowed to take per month. It's sad, but it's true, and I don't know why that's the case, but that is the reality of what we're living with. So on the good months, I would end up being able to save some of the abortives that my insurance allowed me to pick up. And then on the months that were worse, I was able to use my full 20 doses a month and not worry about running out. Most of these are actually expired now, which is great, but it sucks that I had to pay for this many refills and this much stuff is now getting wasted because it's a really bad system that we're living in. I do feel pretty hopeful that with more time and awareness and funding and research about chronic migraine, maybe this whole thing will become a thing of the past and we won't need to worry about this in the future. So I definitely don't mean to complain. But if you're just starting out with trip dance, it's just something to be aware of. This might be something that you need to be mindful about. And I don't want to get in trouble, so I'm going to tell you again, like I do in almost every video, I'm not a doctor, I'm just a patient, this is my experience. Everyone's experience is going to be completely, completely different. So you really need to talk to your doctor about what you want, what you need, what you're actually feeling, and figure out what's best for you. This is just one case study. Fact check everything that I say, assume I'm lying. The very first triptan that it seems like most people try is called Imitrex. The compound is called Sumatriptan. All of the abortives that I have tried end in triptan. They're all triptans. So Sumatriptan is also known as Imitrex. It seems to be the one that most people start on. Sumatriptan comes in a pill, a nasal spray, a nasal powder, and an injectable. Something like that at the time that I was taking them. Even though technically all of the different routes are sumatriptan, each of them comes with different doses, different side effects, different effectiveness, different speed of action. How do I say that? I guess that's the best way to say it. It's almost like they're different medications, even though it's technically the same compound. The first one that they put me on is the pill, and it's your standard white pill. The dose I was put on was to take 100 milligrams, which is one capsule, and if the migraine didn't improve within two hours, then I could take an additional 100 milligrams. Insurance filled 12 pills per month, and I was allowed to take up to 20. So a lot of the time, I would break the pill in half and just take 50, 
and then wait the two hours and take the additional 50. So there's that disconnect and that's why I still have extra. The good thing about this one is very easy to take, very straightforward to take, and it did work for me if I was able to take it early enough in the migraine, but this was before I had the service dog. So this is back when I was still guessing when the migraine was gonna get really bad. I made a video last week talking about the stages of migraine and why it's kind of difficult to know when to take your trip down. So if you haven't checked that out, hopefully that will clear up any confusion if you're having it right now. The side effects that I experienced for the Imitrex pill are kind of hard to distinguish from just having a more mild migraine. The side effects were things like feeling drowsy or heavy, having a really mild headache. So even though they're side effects, they also could have just been that my migraine was being really well controlled. And I did find these to be very effective. But the problem is, the next day I would have a rebound migraine. The rebound migraine was maybe half of what the original migraine would have been, I'm guessing of course. And I enjoyed that I could put off a bad migraine today for a sort of mild migraine tomorrow, but that wasn't a very good trade-off. Taking a half dose in order to save pills and avoid a little bit of that rebound did work sometimes, and I didn't have a rebound with only the half dose, but sometimes that wasn't effective enough. Sometimes it wouldn't quite kick it, and that could have been partially because I wasn't taking it early enough, but I'll never really know, so that's just something else to keep in mind. The other issues that I had with the Imitrex pill are highly personal, and that's why I say that you really need to talk to your doctor about your particular migraines, your body chemistry, your other medications, and what your preferences are. This was before the service dog, before vestibular therapy, and before I knew that I have a milk fat allergy that causes a lot of my vertigo. So at the time, I was having a ton of vertigo with my migraines, really bad spins, really bad nausea, and usually vomiting every day, a couple times a day. So a lot of the time I would realize, okay, this migraine's getting really bad. I would have to guess, yeah, this is a good one to abort. I had to be really choosy about when I was aborting because I don't have a lot and you only get 10 per month. So I would take the first dose and then 10, 20, 30 minutes later, I would vomit. I can only guess that that was throwing up a lot of the dose, but I couldn't exactly just take another dose at that point. So I still had to wait my full two hours, and now I'm aborting the migraine two hours later than I actually wanted to. And that can have pretty bad consequences because the earlier you take it, the more effective it is. So, big problem there. Another thing with the vertigo and not having the service dog for mobility or for getting water yet is that sometimes I wouldn't have water with me. There were some times when it was early enough in the migraine that I could go get the water. I'd bring it to the coffee table where I was sitting and watching TV or whatever I was doing. I would use it to take the first dose and then over the two hours I would finish drinking all of it and I would forget to leave some in the cup for my second dose. But by then, sometimes I was way too dizzy and I couldn't get up to get water. So I'd be sitting there with the abortive and no way to take it and if I was home alone I wouldn't want to go to the kitchen with that bad of vertigo. With the service dog you can teach them some light mobility so Buddy could have had his harness on if I had him at the time and he could have led me to the kitchen to get water or I could have trained him to get me water but this was before any of that. This is before Buddy was even born. I have mentioned that now I'm very good at balancing with vertigo. Right now I'm very good at walking with vertigo and most of the time I can walk even with my worst vertigo. However, this was before I took vestibular therapy. This is before I learned how to walk with vertigo. So at the time, these pills just did not fit my lifestyle. The pill is also the slowest acting of the Imitrex administration routes. So I went ahead and let my doctor know that I wanted to try something different. So then I switched to the nasal spray, and that was extremely short-lived. The spray is exactly what it sounds like. If I remember right, honestly, it's been so long and I only did it like three times, but you kind of tilt your head back and you squirt it up your nose while you're really gently, and then you sit there and you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth so that it stays in your nose for like 20, 30 seconds. I feel like it was no longer than a minute. Obviously, you have to look it up and follow your instructions. I I'm guessing, but I think it was along those lines. The nasal spray was a really good next step for me because it was a little bit faster acting. It didn't have the throwing up problem. It didn't have the no water problem. And it was less scary than the injectable. A big con for the nasal spray is that it tastes really bad. 
For me, it wasn't unbearable. There are some people who just absolutely can't stand it, but compared to a migraine, that's really not bad. What was worst for me is that it was a little bit of a burny sensation in my sinuses, and I would end up having a sore throat for the entire next day or sometimes even two days after I took the dose. So if I happened to get a couple of days off after the aborted migraine, I would have a sore throat instead. And that just kind of sucked. So I decided, okay, you know what? I'm ready. I'm going to suck it up. I'm going to try the injectable. Eee! The injectable is sort of the last thing that you want to try when you get extremely sensitive sunburned skin that I talk about with you guys all the time. But the injectable ended up being pretty great. So let's talk about that. Oh, and my dose for the nasal, I... Oof. I actually have no idea what the dose for the nasal was. Yeah, I have no idea. But that one is a metered spray, so I don't think I would have been able to cut it in half even if I wanted to. So, um, yeah, iffy on that. Let's talk about the shot. Injections. I used the Sun Pharma brand. It's the six milligram half milliliter, which means there's six milligrams of sumatriptan dissolved in half a milliliter of liquid that gets injected via auto injector in my case. Now unfortunately these were super super expensive for me even with insurance. I think they ended up being $15 for two doses or $15 for two boxes maybe. They come two in a box. So I think it ended up being like actually a few dollars per dose which is a lot to be paying for migraines that are coming on that frequently. My insurance was only covering four of the auto injectors per month. That is not enough. That's not enough in the slightest. So that was another big problem. So they were very expensive and there were not nearly enough being approved. What I would do every time I received a new box is I would put in an alcohol prep pad and a little band-aid so that anytime I needed a shot, everything I needed was right there in the box with the injector. And this one, of course, I used one, so there's just one set left in here. What I remember about the auto injector is you need to take it out and look in the little window and make sure that the liquid is still clear. It hasn't precipitated at all. You need to make sure that none of the powder has come out of the solution. So this one is still good to go even though it's expired. Don't use it when it's expired. But it's got this cap. You take off the cap and that exposes the needle that's inside. And then you have to be pushing down this ring. This ring has to be completely pushed in on your body, on your leg or your arm or your stomach in order for the button to actually be able to be pushed. Really well designed auto injector. These ones worked really well and they feel really sturdy. I was a weenie so I would have my husband do it for me or if I was at work I would have a friend who I spoke to ahead of time who was willing to do the injection for me and most people are more than willing to do it because they don't have to touch the needle either it's just a matter of hitting the button the best thing about the auto injectors is that they're extremely fast acting they would work within like five minutes and for me once the injection was happening i could literally feel it spreading from the spot where the injection was it would just spread over my entire body and on the one hand that's really great it's very quick and you can tell that it's working on the other hand, it was sort of a terrifying, paralyzing feeling, especially the first time that it happened. Let me stand up for this. Oh, my prego belly. I had my husband do the injection in my thigh the first time. When he injected it here, I could feel it spreading. And it was such a paralyzing feeling that when it got to about here, I was worried that I wouldn't be able to breathe anymore. So I took a huge inhale so that when it got here, if I felt like I couldn't breathe, I would at least start inhaled. And that is not how you should feel when you try a medication. <laughs> so I was really glad that I had my husband there to help with that. And I'm glad that I set up the situation the way that I did. Oh my gosh, guys. And there's actually a picture. Okay, I'm going to see if I can find this picture. And if I find it, I'll put it here. There's a picture of like one of the very first injections that I did. And Buddy's a little tiny puppy. And I have a picture of the band-aid on my thigh with the little puppy on the ground. And looking back, I just can't believe that's where we were compared to where we are now. So, some tips. Have someone else inject you. Get yourself in a comfortable position. Lay down. Make sure you're nice and comfortable. Get in a situation where you can be totally relaxed and have the other person worry about the needle stuff. And your job is just to relax because if you're having a migraine, you're going through enough. Another tip is that different brands of auto injectors 
can be more or less painful than other brands. So I would specifically request that I get the Sun Pharma ones because the other brand was super painful and I don't remember what that brand was, but I know that the Sun ones, these are the ones that I liked better. What number am I on? I think I'm on like tip number four. Try different injection sites on your body. So for me, thigh ended up actually being the most painful. I never tried it in my stomach. What I ended up settling on is my arm, this like arm fat in the back. I would kind of put it here and that, I barely felt it, barely hurt at all. And I didn't get that spreading sensation quite as much as when I did it in my thigh. And I think you might be able to see in that picture that I had some redness around the injection site. That's one of the very normal side effects. Outside of that and the heavy feeling, I don't think I really had a lot of side effects. For the most part, if I did an injection, I felt pretty good like 20 or 30 minutes later and I was able to actually get on with the rest of my day. Even though it was a really difficult 20-30 minutes, it was much better than going through the entire migraine. I actually really enjoyed having the injectors. I felt like I could truly just abort and then push through a little bit of time and then get my day back. And I don't recall whether I rebounded with these. I'm about done remembering these days. Eventually, I did decide that the auto injectors were just a little bit too aggressive for me. What I learned eventually was that it was a really intense vasoconstriction that was happening when I was doing the auto injector. I guess that's how the trip dance work in the first place. So I was worried that it was just a little bit too hard on my heart. I really don't feel like I should be going through this much of a physiological response just to avoid the pain of the migraine. So. I did decide to fail the auto injector and ask my doctor if there was maybe something else that I could try. And there was. And the next thing I tried ended up being my personal godsend. Everything that I needed in an abortive and it comes with a nice minty flavor. So let's talk about Maxalt. Rise a trip down. Here is some of my stash of Maxalt. It's beautiful. And each of these boxes also has another additional three bags in it. Rise of Triptan ended up being just the absolute best thing that ever happened to me and my migraines. In terms of abortives, I think this is the best that I could have done for my preferences and my body chemistry. The Maxalt I was taking came in 10 milligram tablets. And it's an orally disintegrating tablet, meaning it dissolves in your mouth and you don't need any water to take it, which you know was a problem for me. In each packet, they're expired so I can just open it up for you. Each packet has a little second packet and inside this packet, there's a little pill. I don't remember how much insurance was covering for these, but I was getting rebound migraines when I was taking the full dose. So I ended up being able to just take half. I would kind of just bite off half of it and then I would save the other half to be my second dose two hours later or to be used on a future migraine. Oh, the smell. The smell really brings back memories. It's just a little white tablet. These have a really excellent minty taste. I loved the taste of these. These just in general felt a lot more gentle. I feel like I don't get the crazy side effects that I was getting from the other things. I don't get a really heavy feeling. I don't feel like it makes my neck stiffness worse, but some of this could just be that I'm better at managing my migraines now. I have better warning, blah, blah, blah. By this point in my migraine journey, in addition to having the service dog and the vestibular therapy under my belt, I also had a couple of other new pills in my toolbox. First one being a muscle relaxer, 10 milligrams baclofen. I had no side effects, but it would get rid of that really bad stiffness in my neck, and that would take care of some of that dull, throbbing head pain that I was getting during my migraines. And the second one, promethazine, I was taking a dose of 25 milligrams, and that would take care of the nausea. And again, absolutely no side effects with that pill. Really great, not abortive, but um, symptom-specific relief. So if I had taken Maxalt at the time that I was taking the Imitrex pill, I can't guarantee that I would have felt the same way. You know, like the two times are so different that it's possible that some of my draw towards this is from having so many other things figured out. Oh, my allergy too. But overall, I found these a lot easier. And just to state it explicitly, I am off all 
migraine medications during my pregnancy. I am not taking anything at all. Always make it a mess. I have a couple more takeaways or tips that I learned from this whole experience that I wanted to let you guys know before I officially end the video. First one being that trying new medications can be scary, but it can be completely worth it to find your perfect match. If I had given up at the nasal spray or given up at the injectable, there's a possibility that I never would have stumbled upon Maxalt. My ability to manage my migraines would have been greatly decreased by not taking that extra step. I highly prefer taking natural approaches when I can and avoiding taking prescriptions just in general, but in some cases, finding the right abortive can truly give you your life back. And for me, I was in my career. I really didn't want to lose my job or have my migraines cost me all of my social time. So for me, going through all of this in order to find Maxalt, something that really worked well for me, was very worth it. It's not worth it for everyone. There's no guarantee that you're gonna find your perfect match, or maybe you'll find your perfect match at the very beginning. But sometimes it takes some trial and error, and that's okay. Also, when I say perfect match, I don't mean perfect medication. There are side effects to damn near everything, so you can't expect that there's just magically going to be something that doesn't give you any side effects. There are a lot of migraines when I take Maxalt at the right time, it goes really well, and I feel like I'm almost normal for the rest of the day. But you also have to keep in mind that you're aborting this huge neurological event that is still trying to happen within your body, and the pill can only do so much. You're probably still going to feel tired. You're probably still going to feel some effect from the medication. You can't expect that it's just going to be a perfect band-aid. You're not going to rebound. You're not going to have side effects, and the migraine is just going to disappear. That's not realistic. You need to have very realistic expectations when you're going into this whole process. If you do end up doing what I did, going through a bunch of medications and trying to find one that works best, make sure that you're taking notes on the pros and cons, the side effects that you're having, and most importantly, your wish list for the next one. And I can't stress the wish list thing enough. If I hadn't told my doctor that having water on hand was something that was actually a little bit difficult for me to accomplish. She may not have tried me on things like the nasal and the shot and the orally disintegrating. She might have just switched me over to another pill because she knew that I was comfortable with swallowing whole pills. And we all know that the ability for a migrainer to remember all these things when you're talking to a doctor is not good. So having a list of pros, cons, side effects, and your wish list is a good strategy so you can go in, say, here's what happened, help me out. Another thing I learned, well, I didn't learn it the hard way, but I learned it the interesting way. If you are able to have somebody with you the first time that you take a new medication, I think that there is never any harm in that. I probably would have freaked out if I did my injection without having someone there the first time because it ended up just being this crazy feeling and like I said, I felt like I wasn't going to breathe and I ended up being totally fine. I was just really heavy. But yeah, I would say if you can, just have somebody around when you take a medication for the first time because that way you can be a little bit more relaxed in the moment. Peace of mind is really powerful. So having a person there is really just for peace of mind. And last. I cannot believe that this is the case, but you need to check your own drug interactions. There were a couple of times that the abortive that I was prescribed was not the best abortive to be taking in combination with the preventative pill that I was already on. And it sounds like there is some debate about this in the medical community because when I asked my doctor about it, when I asked the pharmacy, they said it was fine. But in my own research, I was finding some studies that said that X pill can double the blood concentration of Y pill if they're taken together. And I was like, uh, I don't really know if I want to be taking something that is increasing doses by that much, even if it is like safe. I wish I could remember what exactly the pills are, but for those I decided, okay, I'm not going to take those together anymore. But that's something else that I thought I should let you know about, just give you a little bit of advanced warning. You should really check your own drug interactions before you add anything new to your cocktail. All right, guys, that's it for my experience with abortives. If you've also taken a bunch of different triptans, drop your list in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. 
As always, I hope that you found this useful and helpful, and I will see you next week with another video. One of those takes better be good.